Hey everyone, welcome back. As you may have seen last week, we sanded down all of the floors in our home, roughly over a thousand square feet going through all of the grits. And now here's what the floors look like currently. It was a ton of work, but we're not done yet. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how to stain the floors and apply a top coat. But before we get into all that, we first need to clean up all the dust from the sanding. Now, while we did vacuum the entire floor, we went over it one more time with these tag cloths and that made sure to pick up all of that fine dust that the vacuum couldn't get. Before we could apply our sealer and stain, we had to choose it. And after doing a lot of research, we did land on Bona. But with that, we had to choose what color. And I think we looked at so many pins. We Googled pictures, trying to see what colors would look like. But even our top three looked completely different in every picture we saw. Yeah, there's five different colors that this stain slash sealer comes in and it goes all the way from almost a whitewash to an amber color. I originally wanted the middle stain, which is called Classic, and she wanted the more whitewash stain called Nordic. Like it looked like the perfect whitewash floor that I would want. So we compromised on the second lightest stain, which is called their Natural Sealer. After all this research and Grant driving way out to buy the product, it was finally time to apply it. And again, we started upstairs. I was super nervous, I know Grant was super nervous, and it going on, Honestly, when I'm pretty dark and I was a little nervous, I was like, it looks good. It kind of looked like the classic or even one darker than the classic. And we're like, are we sure we got the right color? This doesn't look it. And they were like, should we have gone Nordic? We were freaking out because we just spent all this money and we just sanded all the floors. Yep. And now we're like, are we going to have to sand everything a second time? Or like, it looked good, but it was like, if someone else came to this house, it was almost the exact same color of what we started with. Yeah, it's like, what was the point of all of this, all this money and all this labor? So like, oh my goodness. On top of that, I applied it the way that Bona recommends to do it, which is basically in kind of rectangle patches, making sure to maintain a wet edge between them. However, I noticed pretty major streaking based Basically, you could see where one rectangle ended and the next one started. I'll try to put up some B-roll from our Instagram. And I was extremely concerned. Again, I'm like, what is, why was all this work for if we're gonna have screwed up floors? So I was really concerned, but I basically just let it dry and moved on to the second bedroom using a new technique. But luckily, in the meantime, the first bedroom had started to dry and it dried a lot lighter and closer to what we were expecting, which is really nice. And on top of that, the streaking pretty much started to go away and you didn't really notice it at all. So that was a big sigh of relief. Here you can see some real-time footage of how I applied the sealer, first using a paintbrush on any of the edges that I plan to contact with the roller. I then poured out a pretty big puddle in the middle of the room of the sealer, and then I slowly used the roller to kind of squeegee it out across the floor. If you go too fast here, it's going to flick up a lot of that sealer in the air and you're going to get specks. Once that was done, I used the roller to slowly roll it out from wall to wall in one long pass, and this helped to prevent streaking. I also made sure to get full coverage everywhere and also not to have any puddles that way it was even coverage across the entire floor. All right, so we just finished applying the natural seal. I was really stressed at the beginning and thought I didn't know what I was doing because I don't really know what I'm doing, but I kind of know what I'm doing. I did change my technique halfway through to kind of reduce the amount of those wet edges that you might see or those streaks. And the, the, the second technique actually worked pretty well. It's a little bit more difficult, but you reduce the streaking. And yeah, it took about three hours. Started at 1130. It's just after 230. Didn't take any breaks. I'm starving right now. And all I've had today is a cup of coffee, um, but I wanted to get you in real time what it feels like to be done. So I haven't even eaten yet. And uh, yeah, we're going to wait two or three hours, let it fully cure. They say not to look at it because as it dries, it kind of looks bad, but by the time it fully cures and dries, it looks a lot better. So I'm just gonna let it be. And yeah, we're gonna eat some food, wait three hours, and then we'll put on our first coat of Traffic HD after. Let's get to it. By to it, I mean, let's wait for three hours. Okay, bye. And while we wait for it to cure, Bianca made us some dinner. After dinner, we had my parents over, but that was not gonna stop us from applying the first top coat. All right, so it's now 10 o'clock, but we wanna get our one coat of finish on over top of our sealer. And for that, we're gonna be using the Traffic HD, which is Bona's basically most heavy duty finish. It's water-based, but it's super durable. We wanna shake this can for about 30 seconds. And then here we have our hardener. Once you add this, you have four hours working time which for us shouldn't be a problem, but just buyer beware. So now we'll pour this in there. And then once that's added, you wanna shake it again. When we go to pour it out, we're gonna slide this strainer in the cap. And what this helps to do is strain any of the material. If there's a little like coagulate or something, it'll catch it so it doesn't get any finish. 
and also it helps prevent grips. So there we go. Let's get to laying it down. Luckily for this pass, I was actually helping and doing the edges. So with us tag teaming, it definitely went a lot faster. Working with that brush on the edges was actually super easy. It was just like working with clear nail polish. And one of the key things that we took note of is that we wanted to maintain a wet edge as we continued from room to room. But just because of the layout of the three bedrooms and the hallway upstairs, that was very difficult. So what we did was we applied tape on all of the thresholds of the bedrooms and aligned it perfectly where two boards met up with one another. That way we could end one room, pull off the tape and then start a second room before starting the hallway. And that way there wasn't any weird blend lines and there wasn't any issues with those wet edges. So that's a really key pro tip if you're gonna do this yourself. At this point, it was probably already like 11, 11.30 and we had the upstairs already finished, but we were just like, all we have left is the dining and living, like let's just keep going. Yeah, and the bedrooms are a little bit more intricate with all the closets and changes of angle, whereas these are nice and big rooms. So it seems like, oh, this will go a lot faster, but they are a lot bigger than you realize. And it did take a really long time. And it was especially hard in here because we don't have any overhead lighting in this room at all other than the windows. But by this time, it was obviously dark out. So it was really hard to see. I had to have Bianca kind of check on occasion to make sure I was getting full coverage with the roller. But luckily, we didn't miss a single spot. We finished applying the first coat of Traffic HD last night at about 12.30 in the morning. And now it's the next morning and the floor looks really nice. However, it's a little bit rough. So we're gonna go ahead and sand it down with my orbital sander at about 220 grit to knock off all the nubs and make sure it's nice and flat and level. And then we'll apply our second and final coat of the Traffic HD. Let's get to it. Now, while I wish I had one of those really big square footed sanders from the first episode of this series, I had to use my little small orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper. And to make sure I didn't miss a single spot, I basically went over each board individually in kind of like a snaking pattern. And this took two or three hours, but it made a big difference. Grant was telling me he was gonna do that. And the skeptic that I am, I'm like, is this really, am I really even gonna notice it? But Grant made me walk on it before and after and I couldn't tell the difference, so it was worth it. Then once that was done, it was finally time to apply our second and final coat of the Traffic HD. And with that, there were four different sheens we could have chosen from. There was matte, satin, semi-gloss, and gloss. And we knew we wanted somewhere in the middle. I feel like if we chose matte, maybe some imperfections may show and gloss would look, to me, I think artificial, so we went with satin. Yeah, I think semi-gloss even and gloss look a little bit outdated. It kind of, that's kind of what the floors looked like when before we sanded them with that amber tone. But now we're trying to go a little bit more modern and we like the more matte look, but we thought matte would be kind of too far in that sheen spectrum. And I think it would show dust a lot more, which is something that Bianca noted. So we went with just one level gloss here, which is the satin, and we're really happy with the way that it looks. Something we easily agreed on. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to note that Traffic HD is an extremely durable finish and is actually used for a lot of commercial purposes. So it's going to be plenty strong for this residential application. And it's a great choice if you have a lot of dogs or kids because it gives you that peace of mind. Still don't let Olive run here though. Yeah, no fetch on the hardwood. <laughs> And that's a wrap on the floors, and I never want to refinish them again. After all the hard work, I think it took about two weeks in total. We love the floors. We love the color. As you saw in the video, we were really concerned initially, but I think we chose the perfect color. It's not too white. It's not too dark. It's just in the middle. Yeah, and they seriously look like brand new floors. It's crazy to think about just how much the floors have changed from that orange amber color, but it's even crazier to think about what it looked like when it had that green carpet. And we're actually not done just yet. We still have to install all the shoe molding around the perimeter of the rooms and reinstall all the vents. So stay tuned for that video next. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and then make sure you also subscribe so you can see us wrap up these floors and the rest of this house. And if you have any questions about refinishing hardwood floors, you can leave them down in the comments and we'd be happy to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching. And happy building. See, see you, next. you next time. See you, see you next, next time. time. Okay. We'll put point normally. Okay, I'll try. Are you going to include all the times you just messed up here? I didn't mess up. Yeah, you did. You kept stuttering. I think you should add it in. Uh, I'll try and find them if they're there. I don't think they're right. Okay.